my partner, who was living in Mangara 10 years, he was drinking too much fog and smoking too much ganja. And that's when he had a big fall. We had to rush to Down Hospital. I told my family to pray for my husband. I went to the chapel in Down Hospital and prayed and cried. Lord, bring my husband back then. My daughter was only five years old when he left us. When he was in ICU, he, he eventually he died. He said he was in this dark place where he didn't like being there. He felt this heat and he had people crying and yelling and singing out for help. Calling Ray, Ray, help us, help us, but I didn't want to turn back, see. I wanted to go straight ahead, see. I was walking, walking, one and every day, grabbing my by my chair and every grabbing me to stop it there. But I said, no, I want to go straight to that little light. I seen a little light there. When we was praying, this light just shine in this dark place. As he was walking, he saw this light and he found Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He didn't know who this Jesus was. He reached that light. That light just like, like a vacuum, right? Just swallowed him back and made him go back to his normal body. They were pushing him back to the morgue. He was in that um, body bag and then ready to be in the cooler. When I, when I walked up that body bag, I was moving around. I tried to open the safe. I said, somebody opened the safe, so I'll come outside. I was, I was breathing, you know. I wanted to come out of the body bag. Eh? You get me out of the body bag? One nurse heard me and then, then he said, he's awake. And they, then they opened the body, um, safe open and then down and got up. That's when God answered our prayer and brought my husband back to life. Oh, he's alive, he's alive. They said, he's alive. Put him in that thing. And they put me in the machine I to make me breathe good way. Yeah. And now he, he's really gentle, you know, and God uses him to witness to other men too in our community. I'll follow the Lord. I'll keep on following the Lord. I won't turn this way or that way, just go straight ahead. I thank God because only God can do that when we pray and we seek him, you know. But I was a heavy drinker and a heavy smoker. I, I smoke a lot of ganja and smoke beer. I said, no, I can't do that anymore. I'm going straight to the Lord, straight ahead. <laughs> Originally come from Nuka. My grandfather, grandmother, and mother and father are from Nuka. From the 80s, I've been living with my partner in Beswick. I have three brothers and one sister. My kids, I got three boys and one girl and five grandchildren. And I got one adopted daughter. But also I've been like a mother and a grandmother looking after kids who have no mother and father. Be their mom, be their grandmother, be their auntie, you know. I used to work as a senior health worker in Beswick. And now I work as a assistant teacher in a sport and rec. And I play keyboard, I sing, I lead the church. And sometimes I just see women come to me or women with babies or their partner, and they just, they just say, can you come and pray for my family like who's sick? And I, I do sometimes go to their camp or sometimes I just pray for my camp. And, and I, then I ask the person the next day, Did the, your husband or your baby are all right? And they say, yeah, that's through the prayer, you know, because prayer is powerful. I'm happy you know what God is doing in my life. Jesus changed my life by hearing the elders and learning from them when they teach Ari Sunday School or Michael Gumbley and one of the, some of the elders planted that seed 
inside of me, the, the Word of God, how to know who this Jesus was in our life. But I didn't really have him in my heart. You know, the Holy Spirit teach me to learn more, you know, and teach me how to accept this person in my life here. Yeah. And I did find Jesus here. Yeah. Without him, I wouldn't be here today. I've been through many sorrows, like my mom, my eldest brother, my younger sister, my youngest brother. They all been just taken away. And I haven't got a reason why they were gone. Only God knows. But through all my sadness, I just kept asking God, you know, to bring peace, bring love and bring joy. And He never leaves me nor forsake me. A scripture verse always come to me in Psalms 23. God is saying, you know, the, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me to that quiet place and I go and relax because that's where I can hear the bird. You can see the river, the flowers. I can't hardly describe how much God really loves us. So I'm just thankful and grateful to the one here. When my father died, my mom, she abandoned me and my little sister. That's when we left without a mother, without a father. He's my eldest brother. I was only 10, I think 10 years old, and my sister was six or five. I felt this hurt when I was growing up, you know, when I was older with my own kids. Grew up without knowing who their grandmother was, only father's side. It was hard for me. I was praying and asking God, you know, where's my mom? You show me. You know, God was leading me back to Basic. She was praying too, you know, like light was showing him a road to go to Beswick. And that's where I was at that time when she was praying. And searching, searching many years, you know, I couldn't find him till God brought her back. I was happy, but not really, because I still had anger, bitterness. Only the outside appearance, I had that love and smile, and but inside I didn't have that real love for my mom, you know, because she left me and she's supposed to be there for me, you know, and my little sister and my brother. I didn't really know the meaning of forgiveness. I didn't really know about the meaning of love. But the Lord speaking to me, pray for your mom and forgive her. Do it in action. So I had to take the first step and say, Mommy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you leaving me and for me hating you. I didn't want you back in my life, but God is telling me to say sorry and forgive. And then she turned around and said the same thing. Forgive me for not being there for you and your sister. I was out drinking and drowning my sorrow, but now I'm here. God brought us together to forgive one another and to share that burden. And I was really happy and released. When she gave her heart to the Lord, she used to get up and dance, even though she was sick. She would get up and dance and praise God. She became a well-known artist. She won four Telstra Award. God just brought all these amazing things to her life and both of us were connected through God's ways. My youngest daughter was the carer for my mother when she got sick. She poured out her love and cried for her when she passed away. God is a good God. Whenever we get, we get hurt, we get blamed, sadness, we can have that sorrow. And we don't want to forgive that person, but deep inside what God is really telling us to show that love and forgiveness. You're releasing that person, you're releasing yourself from all that burden, because if you don't forgive, you will be carrying that burden for the rest of your life. Love covers a multitude of sin, and when we forgive, you know, God release that forgiveness upon yourself and upon the enemy that we have. It sets you free and it sets your enemy free. God is love.